Welcome to my talk, in which I'll be discussing about the energy transfer mechanisms behind the outer peak in stream-wise variance profiles. And I have included outer peak in quotes because of the unresolved issue of whether such a peak is actually present in a canonical boundary layer or not. Uh, this lack of agreement regarding the presence of an outer peak is evident through this plot, uh, where I'm depicting the stream-wise variance as a function of distance from the wall across three orders of magnitude of Reynolds numbers. So throughout this talk, I'll be showing my statistics normalized in viscous units, which would be indicated by a plus sign. And in this plot, the data is from it is from the published data sets of uh, ITIL Amoretil and semi ITIL, which correspond to the largest Reynolds number range of well-resolved data that is available in the literature. These data show a clear inner peak, which is indicated by the green line, and as well as a clear growth with Reynolds number in the outer region. However, within this limited Reynolds number range, at least, we do not see a clear outer peak. But there are several past studies in the literature that have predicted that an outer peak may emerge at extreme Reynolds numbers of the order of Reynolds number 10 to the power 5, either based on higher Reynolds number asymptotics, resolvent analysis, or extrapolation of iterative fits. Now, as you would understand, it is going to be a while before we can conduct well-resolved measurements or simulations at such extreme Reynolds numbers. And so, in this study, we look towards adverse pressure gradient boundary layers for inspiration. In the plot on the right, I'm showing the streamwise variance profiles for an APG boundary layer from the simulations of boswell wettel where the boundary layer is imposed with a quasi-constant pressure gradient strength of beta 1.4, and hence, the only parameter that's varying in all the four profiles is the Reynolds number. And this Reynolds number is matched to be of the same Reynolds number as for the ZPG profiles on the left. We can note that in case of the APG, there's a clear outer peak. And this outer peak strength increases purely based on Reynolds number. And this is something that one would expect for a very high Reynolds number ZPG flow if an outer peak emerges. So considering the similarities between the ZPG and APG boundary layers, the focus of the present study is to compare the underlying energy transfer mechanisms between the two boundary layers. And it is expected that such a comparison may bring out the or unravel the mechanisms behind the U square outer peak. This understanding can be tested in the future for very high Reynolds number bound zero pressure gradient boundary layers where the outer peak has been predicted. Now I understand. I am sort of extrapolating here, and that ZPG and APG are two distinct flows. However, our present analysis is purely based on energy transfer mechanisms. And past studies, such as that of Gungorital, have shown that these mechanisms are similar for these two boundary lines. To be more specific, I'll be analyzing the streamwise Reynolds stress transport term, the uh, equation for which I have spelled out over here. But here, since we are concerned about the Reynolds number variation of the U square profile in the outer region, it makes sense to only consider those terms in this equation which vary with Reynolds number in the outer region. And these are the P PU, which is the production term of U square energy. Then it is the interscale intercomponent transport, which essentially transfers energy from the U component to the V and W component. And the third term is the wall normal transport term. And the order in which I will analyze them has been indicated on the left uh, from top to bottom. For the purposes of simplicity in this talk, I, I limit my analysis of these terms only to a single Reynolds number for ZPG and APG profiles. However, we have confirmed based on, based on an extensive analysis uh, that the similar trends are observed across various other published data sets of ZPG and APG, which you can find in the paper. So let's begin our analysis. We start with the production term and I plot the profiles for PU, for ZPG and APG, vertically above the profiles for the streamwise variance. What we note is there is a peak in the inner region for production and for both ZPG and APG, and that's close to the inner peak of the streamwise variance profiles. Also, we see an outer peak in case of the production for APG, and that is at the same wall normal location as the outer peak uh, for the streamwise variance, while there's no such peak in case of the ZPG. So what we learn from this is that the source term, the source for the peaks in the U-square profile is essentially the U-square production terms. Um, but the question we ask next is, are the mechanisms behind both these inner and outer peaks the same? We can understand this better if we look at the uh, 
uh, equation of TK production more closely, which comprises of the mean shear term and the Reynolds shear stress term. And now if I plot both of these curves in the plots over here, I have considered the mean shear term in the form of a dashed line. And it seems that that term is most dominant and is responsible for the TK production in the inner region. But this term drops significantly in the outer region, which means that the, it is the Reynolds shear stress which is, dom which is responsible for TK production or U square energy production in the outer region. Interestingly, this relative dominance of mean shear and Reynolds shear stress is consistent between ZPG and APG boundary layers, highlighting that uh, highlighting the qualitative similarity in the energy transfer mechanism between these two boundary layers. So next, let's progress to the intercomponent transport term, which, as I mentioned earlier, is responsible for transferring energy from the U component to the transfer velocity components. And that's why I'm plotting minus of pi u profile, since this is something that, this is the energy that's lost by the u component. Again, when I plot consider ZPG and EPG profiles vertically above the u square variance profiles, I see that there's a clear inner peak for both ZPG and EPG in the intercomponent transport term, which aligns well with the inner peak of the streamwise variance profiles. Also, there's an outer peak in case of the EPG inter intercomponent transport term which matches with outer peak in the variance profile. But there's no such outer peak in case of ZPG. What we infer from this is that a part of the U square energy that's produced at these peaks is also transferred via interstate tra intercomponent transport to these transport uh, to these transpose components, V and W. And for the study specifically, I'm interested to look at how, how then how much of the energy is transported to the Decomponent or normal component because that can help explain the dominance of Reynolds shear stress in the outer region. And indeed, when I consider the pi v plus profile for the APG case, we clearly see a dominant uh, energy contribution or the outer peak, which is at the same y plus location as the minus pi u plus term and the outer peak of the stream ice variance. Whereas we see no such outer peak in case of the ZPG profiles, all three of them. So if I now summarize my understanding from, uh, from what we learned from these two energy transport terms, uh, if I summarize them in the form of a energy, in the form of a conceptual picture where the wall is at y is equal to zero, we can say that each peak in the u square profile is associated with the intense uh, u square production, which I'm indicating by the red circles, and a part of this energy produced is also transferred via intercomponent transport to the V component, which I'm integrating through these green circles. And this consistency or correlation exists with the outer peak for both ZPG and APG. Now, what happens is due to this intense activity between U and V components, it also leads to uh, intense activity in the wall normal transport, which I'm indicating through these blue circles. And this is because the wall normal transport TU is essentially proportional to the u square v term, which is the u energy flux of u square along the wall normal direction y. Phenomena, phenomenologically, what this means is that if u square v is less than zero, wall normal transport of u square is towards the wall, whereas if u square v is greater than zero, it means the u square energy is transported away from the wall. Now, with this understanding, if I now compute the energy flux for the ZPG and APG profiles, we get some really interesting uh, profiles. Uh, first of all, we see that the energy flux is zero at each wall normal location where we have a u square peak, be it ZPG or APG. And that is consistent with the fact that we have a maxima, a local maxima in wall normal transport at these locations, indicating that this is the location from where energy is being transported. And below these peaks, we always note transport of u square energy towards the wall. So u square v is less than zero. And above the peak, we see transport of useful energy away from the wall, where it is greater than zero. And this is not just in ZPG, but in APG as well, where we have two peaks, in both near the inner, uh, about the inner peak and the outer peak, we note the similar trend of the wall normal transport. Interestingly, we also note energy flux to be zero at the intermediate location, where we have a minima in the U-square profile. And we interpret this as the region where contradictory uh, trans energy fluxes from so the one that's coming from the inner region 
coming away from the wall and the one that is coming from the outer region towards the wall, they kind of neutralize, leading to the net zero energy flux and leading to a minima in the u square profile. So this leads us to a conceptual picture that we would like to present for a low to moderate returns numbers APG and a APG. We find that phenomenologically similar energy transfer mechanisms exist in both the inner and outer regions of an APG. And this is despite the fact that the intense TKE production is governed by the mean shear in the inner region, while it is governed by the Reynolds shear stress events in the outer region. Also, we find that the key difference between APG outer region and the ZPG outer region is the uh, a presence of intense TKE production that leads to intense intercomponent transport, which governs the wall normal transport, predominantly the one that is transported towards the wall below the outer beam. We, we, it's such a intense TKE production and subsequent energy transfer mechanisms are statistically weak in case of low to moderate Reynolds numbers APG. And hence, they don't show up as clearly uh, in these Reynolds number range. But we have conducted conditional analysis and we see that some, uh, a similar sort of all normal transport of energy can be unraveled uh, via conditional analysis. But Reynolds numbers are just uh, very weak. What this uh, results is a hypothesis for a very high Reynolds number zero pressure gradient boundary layer where it would be interesting to investigate if a similar energy transfer mechanism, as we see for APG outer region, whether they exist for a very high Reynolds number ZPG boundary layer, where previous studies have predicted an outer peak. That's a question that we would like to investigate in the future using higher Reynolds number data. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, these, this study the, and several other findings have been documented in this manuscript, which, which has recently been accepted in JFM but you can access it now uh, on archive via this QR code. Thank you.